Chances are mankind will be pretty busy over the next half century, but while we may find answers to many of our questions, there are some problems we'll likely never figure out. Earth has existed for approximately 4.5 billion years, and evidence from the fossil record suggests that the oldest life forms emerged 600 million years later. Unsurprisingly, among the longest standing stumpers in human history is how we can determine the exact circumstances in which life began on Earth. One theory, following an experiment exploring the possibility of life originating from a primordial soup, highlights a planet's chemical makeup before the emergence of the first life forms. Another suggests that the building blocks of life may have been deposited on Earth by comets. One of the earliest attempts to figure out the origin of life dates back to the 4th century BC, long before the popularization of the scientific method. After observing that flies, worms, and other critters seemingly emerged from dirt and spoiled food, people believed that life could be spontaneously generated, that living organisms sprang to life from non-living things. This was eventually debunked by 17th century naturalists. Francesco Redi's experiment involving rotting meat proved that maggots and flies don't just pop up from non-living things, while Maria Sibylla Marian's illustrations documented the stages of insect metamorphosis. Scientists now know that earthly life requires three ingredients – energy, essential elements such as carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and water. Regardless, we still can't quite figure out how these combine to create life. Your consciousness grants you the ability to feel emotions, form thoughts, experience pain, and react to stimuli around you on a level beyond what is necessary for your survival. But both the how and the why of human consciousness are questions that experts still can't answer. Researchers tend to fall into either of two camps. One that says Homo sapiens are unique due to our ability to have subjective experiences, and another that upholds that consciousness is nothing special, just a biological function that all creatures possess. For a 2018 paper in Frontiers in Psychology, researchers theorized that three components of behavior in animals work together in human brains. These are tool usage, the capacity to communicate, and performing actions for self-amusement. This interface, they say, makes human consciousness possible. Meanwhile, scientists have used neuroimaging data to examine the brain's functional structure, with respect to three core dimensions of consciousness, wakefulness, awareness, and sensory integration. Ultimately, though, we still don't know the specifics of how and why the electric signals in our brain generate consciousness. The Big Bang Theory is the most commonly accepted idea of the birth of everything as we know it, a single super-hot point that somehow rapidly expanded over billions of years, becoming the universe we observe today. But while this theory does provide a plausible math-based explanation as to how the universe came to be, it doesn't really address why it exists, a question which philosophers have tackled as earnestly as scientists. An article published in a 1999 edition of the journal Philosophy mentions three possible responses. The first is that the universe owes its existence to an omnipotent creator. The second is that the universe exists simply because it does. And the third claims that the universe is responsible for its own existence via a kind of closed time loop. Oh, great Scott! According to the writings of 17th century philosopher Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, a real being was responsible for the creation of the universe. In other words, there had to have always been something for the universe to have come into existence in the first place. Other thinkers, however, approach the question by treating the universe's existence as a brute fact, or something that does not require further explanation. There's also the no-boundary proposal developed by theoretical physicists Stephen Hawking and James Hartle in 1983. Based on this theory, the universe has neither a beginning nor an end, so looking for either is pointless. As Hawking himself put it, it would be like asking what lies south of the South Pole. In 2021, cancer caused the deaths of more than 10 million people worldwide. Despite approximately two centuries worth of brain power and countless funds allocated toward cancer research, a cure for this condition has yet to be discovered, and it's highly unlikely that a one-size-fits-all cure for cancer will ever be found. One of the main reasons why no cure for cancer exists is because cancer doesn't just pertain to a single illness. In fact, there are over 200 varieties of cancer, each affecting different parts of the body and manifesting in an assortment of ways. Moreover, even cancer cells in the same tumor can have different mutations. Worse still, it turns out that cancer cells are extremely adept at evading the immune system, which is why some cancer cells can survive treatment and rear their ugly heads elsewhere in the body. With that said, a cancer diagnosis isn't necessarily terminal. Numerous treatment options exist, and global survival rates have greatly improved over the last few decades. Moreover, experts say that focusing on cancer prevention will yield better results than scrambling for a cure. Ultimately, though, the only way a cancer patient can say they're cured is if the symptoms disappear and never resurface for the rest of the person's lifetime. Sleep is one thing we cannot live without. We spend about one-third of our lives snoozing, and our overall well-being greatly depends on getting enough sleep. However, we're still in the dark about why it's a biological need, rather than something we simply enjoy doing. It's okay. I can sleep when I'm dead. Over the years, researchers have developed a few theories to explain the need for sleep. Some experts say that sleep is useful for conserving energy. Getting eight hours of sleep daily can cut a person's energy expenditure by 35%. 
and humans use the least amount of energy when asleep. Another theory proposes that sleep serves as the mechanism for mental recovery, muscle repair, and cellular restoration. A study published in Sleep subjected rats to days of completely zero sleep. The animals showed signs of increased energy expenditure and deteriorating health, and all of them died after a month. Lastly, the brain plasticity theory suggests that the brain uses the hours you spend sleeping to organize and process the entire day's data, thereby affecting your cognitive functions. However, despite these ongoing efforts to figure out why we need sleep as much as food and water, a definitive answer is still a long way off. How many plant and animal species live on our planet? This might sound like the kind of question that a decent biologist should ace, but apparently coming up with a definitive answer isn't as easy as you might think, and not just because there are too many to count. Doing a manual survey of every single species on Earth would, of course, be a logistical nightmare. That's why experts turn to good old math for satisfactory estimates. The numbers vary depending on which formula you use, though. Habitat-based comparisons place the numbers somewhere between 3 million and 5 million, while body size to population ratios suggest that terrestrial animals alone comprise 10 million of Earth's species. Meanwhile, calculations based on evolution-influenced patterns in nature give a figure somewhere in between, about 8.7 million. One study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences yielded an astonishing number after looking at the DNA sequences of microbe species across the planet, almost one trillion. This would suggest that we barely scratched the surface in terms of identifying all the species on Earth. And then there's the matter of actually defining a species. Shared physical traits alone don't hold up to scientific scrutiny, and basing this on the ability to breed excludes not only asexual organisms, but also conventionally separate species that have been observed to mate. Imagine exploring an ancient shipwreck and stumbling upon a mysterious mechanism that looks way ahead of its time. Fortune and glory, kid. Fortune and glory. Well, that's exactly what divers experienced over a hundred years ago, when they were searching the remains of a Roman cargo ship near Antikythera, Greece. The dilapidated machine, which looked like something straight out of a steampunk novel, became known as the Antikythera Mechanism. The discovery raised a couple of immediate questions. What was this thing for? How did ancient scientists assemble what many believe to be the earliest known analog computer? Why was it so ahead of its time, and why haven't we found more mechanisms like it from the same era? Over the years, researchers have been able to determine with some level of confidence what might have been the device its primary functions. After studying its 82 fragments, experts concluded that this geared mechanism, which featured parts made out of bronze, was likely used to map and track cosmic objects in the night sky. Given its complexity, scientists speculate that it couldn't have been unique. Prototypes or even other similar devices are no doubt out there, but to this day we still haven't found anything like it. Regarding the ancient Greeks, materials scientist Adam Wojciech told The Guardian, if they had the tech to make the Antikythera mechanism, why did they not extend this tech to devising other machines, such as clocks? Despite the fact that more than two-thirds of Earth's surface is made up of water, we still can't say for certain exactly why there's so much of this stuff on our planet. To adequately trace the origins of Earth's water, any acceptable theory must not only factor in how elements like helium, carbon, and nitrogen appeared on the planet, but also fit with contemporary ideas about how the solar system came to be. One theory proposes that water arrived on Earth by a cosmic snail mail. Water-rich objects such as meteorites and asteroids may have crashed on our planet long ago, depositing the necessary components on Earth's surface. While this is presently the most popular and accepted explanation, some question its accuracy. In a 2023 study published in Nature, researchers detected a dismally low amounts of water in the cosmic objects within the vicinity of the early solar system. In other words, while some water may have come from these objects, it's unlikely that they were the Earth's main source. Meanwhile, another 2023 paper in Nature suggests that most of our water may have resulted from interactions between atmospheric hydrogen and prehistoric magma oceans. It's also possible that the true explanation could involve both of these theories, but nobody is certain to what degree. Memories are among the most precious things a human can possess, yet the mechanisms that we use to store them in our brains are still shrouded in mystery. For instance, no one can say for sure exactly how the mind manages to transform the information it receives into memories that it retains. What memories? I forgot. Researchers take a more compartmentalized approach to studying memory, looking at various aspects and piecing all the data together like a puzzle. From what experts currently know, the mind is particularly adept at remembering significant life events as well as words that can be pictured or have a physical, visual counterpart. Remembering is just half of the equation, though. As it turns out, forgetting things isn't so much a bug as it is a feature. Can you imagine if your brain involuntarily retained every single piece of information it would come across in a day? It wouldn't take long before your mind becomes filled to the brim with data that you don't really need leaving little to no room for new information you need to retain. Some experts even suggest that giving your brain time for daily mental housekeeping may actually be one of the main purposes of sleep. Still, further research is needed for scientists to better understand the relationship between memories and neural activity. 
The most well-known iteration of the Seven Wonders of the Ancient World is based on a list compiled by Philo of Byzantium, a Greek engineer in about 225 BC. Of these seven monuments, only the Pyramid of Giza has survived the passage of time. But there is one other wonder on the list that is noteworthy among its peers, for an entirely different reason. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon, which is said to have been a project of Babylonian King Nebuchadnezzar II. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon is the only entry on the list of wonders whose location is a mystery. It's so mysterious, in fact, that no verifiable archaeological records exist to pinpoint it, a fact that has raised doubts about whether it even existed at all. Save for a few quasi-credible descriptions penned by Roman and Greek historians, there is a noticeable lack of historical evidence about what the Hanging Gardens actually look like, or where they were. Some modern-day historians have gone so far as to claim that the gardens were simply an imagined story. Others argue that this conundrum may have simply been a case of mistaken identity. The Philo was actually referring to the Hanging Gardens of Nineveh, which was erroneously called Babylon by ancient scholars. Therefore, it is unlikely that we'll ever know. If there is any remaining proof of the Hanging Garden's existence, it's more than likely hidden underwater. The current verifiable record for the longest amount of time a person has lived is 122 years and 164 days. While it's not so common, it's also not so strange to hear about people living past a century. But can we really identify the limit of human life expectancy? Oh, I'm too old for this Experts' opinions vary when it comes to this topic. Some say that the average human can expect to live up to 80 or 90 years old, thanks to modern-day medical innovations. Others estimate that our genomes are hardwired to keep us alive until the age of 115. Zao Pedro de Magalhães, a professor of molecular biogerontology at the University of Birmingham, looked at the genomes of other animals famous for their relative longevity. He came to the conclusion that it's possible for humans to live for literal millennia, albeit with genetic modification targeting the cellular functions that regulate aging. Meanwhile, 2023 research in PLOS One examined mortality records from 19 high-income nations and concluded that the maximum lifespan of the average person will only steadily increase as the decades roll by. Basically, it's tough to crack this one because the answer will always be the age of the oldest person to die until someone else surpasses them. For something so essential to our existence, it's funny how we're still not experts on how gravity works. We can describe how gravity affects the real world based on the established laws of physics, but there are still many mysterious aspects of gravity that have left scientists stumped for the longest time. For example, despite experiments throughout the years to demonstrate the connection between gravity and quantum mechanics, researchers still haven't observed any measurable differences that might unify these two theories. This continues to be a holy grail for physicists, though, since such a theory could fully explain the fundamentals of the universe. It also doesn't help that the foundations of our current understanding of gravity aren't exactly bulletproof. The pioneering work of Sir Isaac Newton, for instance, couldn't explain black holes and other gravitational phenomena. Nearly three centuries later, Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity helped plug some of those holes. But even that theory is flawed. A recently published study in the Astrophysical Journal shows that the observed orbital accelerations of widely separated binary stars don't line up with Newton-Einstein predictions. Nevertheless, researchers haven't stopped trying to understand the many secrets of gravity. A fixture in science fiction and popular culture, black holes are typically depicted as either interdimensional gateways or all-consuming outer space sarlaccs. <laughs> But what would really happen if you somehow had the misfortune of being pulled into one? Well, both interpretations are actually possible. One answer follows the wormhole theory developed by physicist Albert Einstein and Nathan Rosen in 1935, based on the white hole idea posited by another physicist, Ludwig Flam, years earlier. Connected by so-called Einstein-Rosen bridges, black holes and white holes could theoretically serve as cosmic shortcuts for interstellar travel. Sadly, the other possibility seems more likely, that entering a stellar mass black hole or a black hole that was produced by a star's gravitational death would cause your entire body to spaghettify, which is precisely as horrible as it sounds. A less violent outcome might be if you somehow found yourself inside a supermassive black hole. You'd be able to see out, but you'd be impossible to see and rescue from beyond the event horizon. Ultimately, until someone is actually able to conduct an appropriate experiment, any answers to the question of what happens inside a black hole would be based purely on educated guesses. Or as Professor Richard Massey of Durham University's Institute for Computational Cosmology succinctly puts it, who knows? You may be familiar with the terms dark matter and dark energy, and if not, you should be. Approximately 95% of everything that exists is made up of them, with the observable universe making up a measly 5%. To be more specific, more than two-thirds of everything is dark energy, while dark matter comprises a little over a quarter of the universe. The problem with trying to study dark matter and dark energy is that it's much easier to pinpoint what they aren't than what they are. For starters, dark matter isn't normal or visible matter, neither is it antimatter, since it doesn't produce the same radiation hallmarks we observe during matter-antimatter annihilation. 
Our understanding of how light works also disqualifies large black holes from being dark matter. However, the apparent effects that dark matter has on galaxies and galaxy clusters have made researchers confident that there definitely is such a thing as dark matter. On the other hand, dark energy is both mysterious in terms of its composition and impossible to directly measure. Of course, that hasn't stopped scientists from using high-powered telescopes in their attempts to find and study it. We can paint a pretty clear picture of what happens to your body upon death. The process involves a steady drop in your body temperature, discoloration of the skin, and your body alternating between stiff and relaxed states. But while it's possible to describe the observable changes that happen to a deceased body, the non-physical experience of being dead is an entirely different story. <laughs> Time to die! A study published in Resuscitation involved more than 2,000 cardiac arrest patients from the United States, the United Kingdom, and Austria. Over the course of four years, the researchers talked to the survivors who agreed to be interviewed. 39% of their interviewees reportedly had some recollection of experiences and details during the period in which they were considered clinically dead. In an interview with Science Daily, lead author Dr. Sam Farnia explained that this was significant because brain function is said to cease within half a minute of the heart stopping. In other words, the results suggest that the idea of awareness after death merits further study. Meanwhile, users in a Reddit thread who have been clinically dead and then revived shared interesting, albeit unverifiable, answers. Some compared their experiences to dreamless sleep, others recalled seeing their own bodies or existing in absolute darkness. Few criminals are as well known across the world as the infamous serial killer Jack the Ripper, which is ironic considering that we don't know his real name. Committing a slew of gruesome killings in the Whitechapel area of London near the end of the 19th century, this mysterious London-based killer left authorities and the general public both baffled and horrified. Centuries later, his true identity remains a mystery. A combination of scant evidence and anti-Semitism made it impossible for the police to unmask Jack the Ripper. At the time, all that London detectives had to work with were eyewitness accounts with questionable credibility, as well as a bloodied apron scrap and shawl found near Catherine Eddowes, one of the Ripper's five confirmed victims. Making matters worse, some citizens held the racist belief that Jack the Ripper was an immigrant, which led to a number of Jewish men being mistakenly identified as potential suspects. While Jack the Ripper's identity remains unsolved, it's not for lack of trying. Over the years, self-professed Ripperologists have come through every confirmed and suspected murder in an attempt to crack the case. In 2019, mitochondrial DNA analysis was performed on the shawl, but experts were quick to note that such testing could only exclude suspects, not pinpoint them. Thus, despite tremendous leaps in forensic science, it's unlikely that we'll ever know who Jack the Ripper really was. The Macedonian ruler Alexander the Great, who was active during the 4th century BC, was one of the most famous and successful military leaders in history. This makes it particularly surprising that the final resting place of such an important historical figure remains unknown to this day. Conquer your fear! And I promise you, you'll conquer death! Historical records indicate that the warrior king was initially laid to rest in Memphis, Egypt, by his friend and successor Ptolemy I. Some years later, the king's body was reportedly moved to Alexandria, a different Egyptian city. Based on this, historians suspect that Alexander the Great's body may have been taken to the city's eastern part and placed in an unmarked tomb made of alabaster. Some also believe that Alexander's body was initially buried in a sarcophagus built for a pharaoh, next to Nebo II, who was never able to use it. Unfortunately, at this point, we will probably never find out where Alexander the Great was actually buried. In an interview with Live Science, Egyptologist and Robert Anderson Research Charitable Trust Director Chris Naughton said that the tomb has been all but lost to time. This is thanks mostly to the modernization of Alexandria, countless natural and artificial hazards, and a distinct lack of evidence regarding the tomb's appearance. Welcome to Earth. Of all of the solar system's planets, Earth is unique in more ways than one. Aside from being the sole planet confirmed to currently sustain life, it is also the only one that wasn't named after a god in Roman or Greek mythology. Since the dawn of written history, our planet has gone by many names. Among Earth's alternative names was Orbis, a word that Greek scholars coined referencing their knowledge that the planet isn't flat, and Terra, a Latin word that literally means land. Another moniker was Mundus, which is also of Roman origin. Meanwhile, the name Earth has Anglo-Saxon roots. Eartha roughly translates to the ground. This in turn gave rise to other European counterparts, such as the Dutch Arda and the German Erde. It's hard to say why the name Earth stuck, though. Experts assume that it just did, particularly since there appears to be no official declaration or law that made it so. This is also why the identity of whoever decided to name our planet Earth will perhaps never be discovered, unless we somehow unearth such a document. 
Religious texts have extensively tackled the end of everything, taking a more prophetic, almost cinematic approach to describing the end times. Scientists have also come up with at least three very different scenarios. Predictably, none of them look particularly appealing, and all of them are on the table until physicists come up with a theory of everything. First on the list is the Big Crunch. According to this theory's supporters, the continuous expansion of the universe means that, eventually, there will be enough matter within it to not only stop its growth, but also pull itself back in. The second theory, the Big Freeze, imagines what the universe will be like over the course of trillions of years. Initially, the distances between galaxies will become so great that they will be impossible to see, and no more stars will form. By the time the last supermassive black holes evaporate, all of the energy across the cosmos will be uniformly distributed, plunging the entire universe into cold darkness. Finally, proponents of the Big Rip believe that the universe will keep expanding until dark energy surpasses gravity's power. As a result, everything – stars, planets, even black holes – will be torn apart. By the end of this universe-wide destruction, all that will remain are single disconnected particles. Cheery, isn't it?